This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today once again is the president and CEO of Revival Gold, a significant shareholder, I should add, of Revival Gold. I was reminded of that here in an off-air combination uh, conversation. Mr. Hugh Agro. Hugh, how are you this morning? Well, I'm feeling uh, I'm feeling good. Uh, thank you for reminding me uh, of, of that uh, of that share position I I hold in Revival Gold. It's been a painful uh, yeah painful past a uh, couple of years as we've watched this gold sector come together but boy am i excited about what we've uh, what we've delivered here with this resource update today and pfs and i know we're adding value on the project well let's get right into the value that was added and just to be clear do you want to disclose what that what that position in revival is because i think you know i know for me personally as 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 a shareholder and someone that you know writes checks for different companies it really really puts me at ease when i see a dedicated team with a history of success, a major history of success, um, leading the ship and actually putting their money where their mouth is, uh, as opposed to just raising money from shareholders like myself. So if you want to disclose it, great. If not, it's fine, but it is significant. Yeah, about about 5% of the of the total shares outstanding, which is, you know, in total, uh, our management team and board uh, and advisors hold about 10% of the company. So we do care uh, about where our share price goes. And we're focused on delivering value. Well, let's get right into the news today. You announced the results uh, from the open pit heat leach uh, race start plans with the PFS. There, there, there were two parts to this release. And I could tell by the chatter out there and some of the feedback that I received that a lot of people focused on the PFS portion of it. And I can tell you that as someone that really is attractive to exploration and adding value via the drill bit, it was the resource update that really got me excited. The PFS is a great de-risking step, and I think you know is 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 prudent at this time in Revival Gold's uh, life cycle. But I want to start with the mineral resource increase because it was pretty significant. Oh yeah, I mean four point six million ounces, second largest discovery of gold, uh, new discovery of gold in the U.S in the last decade and all gold um it's it's very impressive and you think about it it's just been one year or just over a year since our last resource update so this is pretty you know pretty impressive stuff six dollar an ounce finding cost uh, less than six dollar an ounce finding cost since we got started when you first walked the property uh gerardo we had nothing we had no resource on that property you were uh, eyeing the uh, heap leach pads mm -hmm. with some uh <laughs> with, with some uh, with some interest and uh, wondering what might be uh, still remaining in those pads um but uh, since then we threw the drill bit taking a uh, taking the resource up to 4.6 million ounces 2.4 million of which are in the measured and indicated category and 2.2 million in the inferred category um I'd love you to ask me about some of the details underlying that. No, let, let's get right into it. Let's start with the grade on both, the measured and indicated, and then let, let's talk inferred. But let's start with measured and indicated. Yeah, so um, I, I, before we get to grade, I want to talk about where the numbers went. So within that measured and indicated, we've now got um, uh, almost a million ounces of uh, heap leach material that's a two and a half times increase over our prior prior resource we did a lot of infill drilling with the express purpose of bringing that into m and i uh to for for, for the purpose of um uh, getting ourselves to pfs the de-risking steps you talked about with respect to the pfs so our total uh measured and indicated uh heap leach material is about 42 million tons of uh, 0.7 grams per ton gold for just under a million ounces. And then uh, within that, uh, or, or including the mill resource uh, on top of that, we have uh, now 86 million tons at uh, just under 0.9 grams per ton gold for 2.4 million ounces. So, you know, big, big increases here in terms of uh, uh, the de-risking and the confidence building on the resource in the M&I category. In the inferred category, um, I, I want to highlight the the uh, underground mineral resource, which, as you know, is a big part of our future development. We've uh, increased that now almost three times to to nine hundred 
thousand ounces of gold. Um, that's a um, that's a big increase. And and not only have we increased the amount of underground material, but we've increased it with a higher grade, about a one third higher to four grams per ton. Um, and these are big uh, stoves with horizontal widths of three to 25 meters uh, across the uh, across the resource. The total inferred number is uh, uh, 44 million tons um, at um, uh, 1.5 grams per ton gold in the uh, in the mill category for two million ounces, and uh, there's another uh, uh, there's another uh, uh, additional piece there in the inferred um, about six million tons at 0.5 grams, 100,000 ounces in the uh, in the heat bleach category. So again, 4.6 million ounces, 2.4 million in the ind- measured and indicated, and uh, 2.2 million in the inferred. Let's talk about the exploration upside and let's talk about why that that underground resource is important because of the optionality of a second phase mill operation. I want to get into that because I know that is, as you mentioned, going to play, you know, a big consideration in the future. I know the discussions that have been had with 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 companies that are interested in a near term production story with exceptional exploration upside. If there's been a critique of the project initially, it was that the heap leach resource was too small. You clearly, clearly have taken big steps to remedy that. And again, I want to talk about the exploration upside there. But also the other critique was that, you know, a a lot of the underground material, there just wasn't enough of it to really make a case and justify pursuing that. You've grown that resource pretty significantly over the last couple of years. And again, I do want to speak to the exploration upside there because I think this is but a peak. And we'll talk economics in a bit. I think this is but a peak of what's to come. In the first instance, let's talk about the heap leach material. A million ounces in the M and I category. That's a that's that's a um, that's a pretty impressive number right there. And and especially when you consider the low capital hurdle for us to get into production and start producing free cash flow. Now that. Uh, if you think about it from a big picture point of view, you want to have limits on the amount of capital. You want to have uh, you know, a defined and, and, and achievable capital cost to get into production. And you want to have unlimited uh, NAV growth potential, which is, which is what I think we have in this project. We start with a low capital, but we've got unlimited uh, NAV growth potential with uh, you know, lots of ounces in resource to come into NAV down the road. Uh, that's a much better place to be than having a very large capital with uh, no room to grow the NAV. Um, we've got lots of room to grow the NAV, and we've got an achievable first phase, uh, if you will, heap leach capex of uh, 109 million tons, or sorry, $109 million. So uh, th- that's a great place to be with the um, – the measured indicated heap leach resource with respect to the um, with respect to the underground resource it's open it's open uh, it's open along strike to the north it's open uh, to the south it's open at depth uh, there is nothing constraining this uh, except the drill uh, you know the drilling and we want to be careful about not spending too much money on drilling uh, ahead of getting value for that underground asset this is you know four grams per ton gold uh, big stopes, uh, twice the grade of what they're uh, mining at Goldex in uh, Agnico's operation in Quebec or the Young Davidson mine uh, in, uh, in Ontario that Alamos operates. So these, you know, these are good grades, big, uh, big stope situations, and uh, lots of potential to continue to grow. But we want to be careful about uh, not drilling a- ahead of uh, you know market recognition of that asset. And so you know, job one with this resource out now is to get out and tell the story about that uh, that underground uh, and uh, to be able to demonstrate it with an existing inferred resource uh, of uh, of almost nine hundred thousand ounces. Uh, that's a that's a great place to be. Um, you, you did ask me about the exploration on the uh, in the inferred material. That's what we're focused on. Sorry, on the uh, heap leach material. That's what we're focused on right now. In fact, we started drilling again this week. Uh, we're up at the Romans Trench target. We're going to go back to the Haiti target, and then on to a new uh, a new exploration target on the uh, on, on the project called uh, Ridge. 
very exciting for the geologists, uh, all high-grade, open-pit, heap leach targets to continue to expand on that, uh, that, heap leach, uh, that heap leach phase of the project. What would you say to, and, and I got this from a few subscribers that wrote in and I saw it on a couple of boards, but what would you say to critics that, you know, kind of down talk the NPV at a 5% discount rate, given where rates are right now. I, for one, again, looked at that $109 uh, million of pre-production capital. I thought well, that that's exceptional because I know what the upside is exploration-wise there. So to me, you know, th this is, again, but a peek at what's to come. But for those that are just fixated on the PFS highlights and, and that portion of it, what would you respond to that? Look, there's been a, a long history of discussion about what's the appropriate discount rate for gold projects. Is it five percent? Is it nine percent? Is it you know zero percent? Uh, all kinds of discussion on that, and we could debate that uh, from here to the cows come home. <laughs> the reality is, this is a 24 percent IRR after-tax IIR project in the domestic United States with a uh, hundred million dollar, hundred nine million dollar capex. It is a very low-risk project. I want to point out that most of the capital is associated with mechanized equipment, which is relatively low risk to finance because you can move that equipment. It's mm. not like digging a hole in the ground, doing pre-strip or putting a road in that you can't move. Financiers love that. Uh, in effect, our CFO, uh, Lisa Ross, and I have uh, uh, have uh, you know been in discussions with um, the various different advisory firms and and debt providers around uh, what is possible in a, with a domestic U.S. project with a low capital like this one uh, and the kind of risk profile where we're working from an existing um, brownfield site with a team that's you know, operated this mine before and there's a track record of performance on these grades and on these recoveries. So, you know, this is, this is about, as, you know, about as good as you can get in terms of a risk profile. And, it, and, I, and, I, and again, I emphasize that 24% after-tax return on proven and probable reserves. That excludes any inferred material or any exploration beyond that inferred material, uh, which is, you know, which is, a, which is a bonus uh, uh, still. So, uh, look, I think this is a financeable project, and I think um, there's, there's lots of opportunity for equity holders to make, to make money on uh, this kind of project. I absolutely agree. I know it's the summertime. I know people are out and about and not in the office for the most part. Um, not the case for Revival. You're drilling away. I know you have trips upcoming um, and discussions about that equipment and other uh, potential deals uh, that, that could be a creator for the company. But in the very near term, Hugh, you mentioned the drilling. What comes next? Uh, Roman's Trench. Uh, this is a, a project area we didn't get a chance to get you up to uh, last time around, but uh, we're really excited about this area. There's a couple of um, RC drill holes from the, the 90s that were drilled by a prior operator and not followed up. Uh, we're getting in there with core drilling. We're going to see what we can make of that. Uh, then we'll be back to the Haiti deposit area. Um, uh, you may recall that last year, at the end of last year, we had a high-grade intercept at Haiti, there's some shallow, uh, some some shallow structures, and then they they plunge deeper, and uh, we think there may be a feeder zone under Haiti, so we're going to chase that. Uh, then up to the ridge zone, which, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is a new target area just west of Haiti. These are all open pit heap leach targets um, that are going to be, you know, complementary. And this is an exciting year for us because it's the first genuine exploration we've done uh, beyond the bear track. Um, uh, the main bear track deposit area. And so uh, we're pretty excited about it. Looking forward to all of that. I'm really looking forward to the second half of this year. I think we're going to we're gonna have a, a, a great September, October, November, December going into 2024. Anything to add to that, Hugh? Thank you. Just uh, thank you. And, uh, you know, appreciation uh, on the part of Revival Gold for the, uh, the involvement with Resource Stock Digest and the, uh, the interest of your subscribers. No, look, it's it's uh, everybody knows the business model around here, right? We we try to vet quality stories. We try to provide ideas for people uh, to further their due diligence. We're paid for that, obviously, right? Uh, because there's bills to pay all the way around. But it's 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 rare to have a project that's this de-risked, a brownfield project with exceptional, and I can't overemphasize how exceptional the infrastructure is 
in the U.S., a pure gold project with a ton of exploration upside. I mean, the market cap and 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 the pure comps um, just don't make a lot of sense to me right now. I know that there's whispers of you know, a significant previous shareholder kind of blowing out some shares in an unruly way. And, you know, I I, I understand from talking to a couple of, se- of a, several broker dealers that there's a few of those left. Do you care to comment on that at all? Yeah, look, I, I think we do. We do have a, an overhang in the stock right now. And uh, uh, I think, you know, like the savvy investors will will watch that uh, that trading volume and look for you know, look for an opportunity to ride the uh, the uptrend when we get over that that overhang. And uh, um, the story is intact. Uh, we are de-risking. We are adding value. The team's excited. We're funded. It's um, it's it's summer uh, summer doldrums. But uh, as you point out, we're uh, we're working hard for our shareholders, and uh, I think we're going to have uh, continue to have uh, good news ahead. Now, absolutely agree. And I bring up the overhang because I do think that at current levels, anything around current levels, it's a it's an exceptional opportunity for those of you out there that believe that, you know, the gold space is 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 headed for a much, much better second half of the year as I do. Hugh, thank you as always for that thorough update. You bet. Thank you, Gerardo. Hey everybody, Gerardo Del Real here. If you're enjoying the content that you just saw, you can let us know in three simple steps. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and please share across your network and on social media. Take care everybody.